All right, guys, Coda Boy 32 here. Check it out. Sitting out here on my back patio this morning, having a cup of coffee, getting ready to head into work. But I wanted to do a video real quickly before I did that. So, what we're going to be talking about today is this right here. Finally, this is the Uncle Mike's Sidekick, Ampid Sidekick Ambidextrous Hip Holster. I even have a tough time saying uh, what it is. But in any case, uh, this video is not directed to the guys who are out there who are professionals and you've got all the holsters in the world. This is directed to guys who are going out and buying their first handgun. And that's it. So, here's the scenario that I'm working with. You got my dog over there chewing on a piece of stick. So, you've got this guy right here. You went out to the store, you bought your first Smith & Wesson M&P 9mm. Really cool gun, great performer, awesome. You spent the whole wad on it, but you really want to carry it. And this whole video stems from the fact that I walked into a McDonald's one day, saw this young man, he was carrying his Smith & Wesson in an Uncle Mike's holster, and it, it struck me that sometimes, people, you need to slow down. And I'm not saying this because I'm an arrogant ass. I'm saying this out of my general concern uh, for your safety and as well as other people's safety. So when he had his, his pistol, was in this guy right here, the Uncle Mike's Sidekick Ambidextrous Hip Holster. Now here's the thing. I want to do an honest review, tabletop review. I'm not going to wear it. I know a lot of people think I was going to go ahead and test and evaluate. I don't need to. I can tell you exactly what I need to tell you in this video right now. I don't want to waste anybody's time. So you've just bought your first gun. You've got about 20 bucks left over. First thing you're going to do is go to Walmart and say, ooh, I can carry my gun in that. There are certain applications that this guy might be acceptable, but open carry is not one of them, okay? So please do me a big favor. Look at some other options before you decide to open carry your gun. Because most likely, if you bought your first gun, you're not going to be having your CCW yet. Well on the way to it, but not yet. So in any case, here it is, the Uncle Mike's holster. Now, I'm going to open this thing up. This is the size number 16. And this is developed pretty much for the Glock 19, 23, 26, 27, most of your mid-range guns. So probably the Smith & Wesson M&P is not quite acceptable firearm, but it says the P229R, which I just happen to have one right here. So let's go ahead, clear that bad boy. It's clear, all good, decock it. And we're going to do this, use this as our test model, okay? So this ought to be fun. Alright, so first of all, what you're going to do is you're going to open this thing up. And you are going to find a set of instructions and early warnings and yada yada yada. Law enforcement holsters. Look at that. That's what I'm telling you guys. Alright, take this, read it, because it's got some valuable information in it. So this is what you're going to get. On this particular holster, you've got a really nice mag pouch that I'm not sure if a, let's see, I've got a, actually, there's a 320 mag right here, and see what we got. So, a SIG 320 mag will barely fit in this thing. There you go. And again, guys, I'm not bashing this particular holster as much as I just want to show you what the pros are and the cons. The pros are, if you're going camping, this might be a viable holster. If you need something to store your pistol in while you're waiting on a new holster, this is a great holster. Otherwise, I wouldn't advise it at all. All right, and here's the reasons why. Um, one of the good things about a open carry holster is you've got to have some level of retention. I don't care if it's level one, level two. A lot of people are like, you don't need a level two or level three. If you're a law enforcement officer where you might be getting into a scuffle or hand-to-hand -hand with somebody, probably level three is great because what it does is you have a bell loop over top of this thing and prevents somebody from pulling out without having a trigger mechanism down here or down on your finger. This happens to be just a paddle holster, and it's what I wear on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay, so anyway, back to this guy right here. And I hope I'm not rambling on, which I have a tendency to do. you got a couple different things. One is this little belt clip right here. That, in itself, is just not going to get it done, okay? So what you've got is this really cool loop system that they can put on here, but guys, they can yank this thing right off of there, okay? So pull it off. The holsters probably, and matter of fact, I've on very many occasions have actually seen these holsters fly off just from people running. 
Don't ever show up to a class with one of these things. So what you're going to do, and I, take, I took this thing off. I was on the phone with Big Johnson. I was kind of messing around with it, trying to develop an idea. And it broke in two different locations just from me looking at it. One was here, and the other one was here. Now, what you do is you take this little tool. This is your flat piece. That piece of Velcro, if you can see it, is actually just stuck on there through adhesive. What you're going to do is you're going to take and measure what the distance is around here to provide you with enough area to, to basically put it on. And then you're going to shove it up in here like so. Let me show you. And there's a piece stuck up in there because it broke off earlier. But you're trying to protect that interior Velcro section. And it's a pretty neat little deal. I mean, honestly, it's an ingenious idea what they did here. And you're going to pull it up like that. And at that point, you're going to pull that protector piece out. And then what will happen is, is the Velcro inside there will keep this from coming out. Now, you've got a loop across the top, just like that. Now, will it work? I didn't measure for it because I have no intention of ever putting this gun in there. But the idea is for this loop to come across the top right here and here. Now, nice. You've got a holster. You've got a gun that's supposed to fit in here. And there's really ridiculous. But you got a lot of weight that's being held on by this little clip right here. And I'm going to show you real quickly. I'll point this thing to the side. I'm going to put this thing on. Never mind this. Watch this. You can actually take this little section right here and pull it right out. It's useless. Okay, so you got a useless cover. Okay, and I'm going to show you the clip here real quickly. Here we go. Alright guys, so first of all, what you got to have is a very good belt when you're wearing something that's open. So what I'm starting off with is this guy right here. This is a black scorpion. This is a competition belt. It's velcroed all the way around. But what it provides for you is a very stiff option instead of some kind of leather belt. Now, here's the thing. You've got your pistol. It's in your Uncle Mike's holster. And you've got your clip here. Now, I'm guessing that's probably an inch and a half. I don't even know how to start doing this. You're going to put it on there. Just like that. Now, here's the thing. That's what the holster looks like. And I can wiggle it around. Hey guys, that's that's not how an open carry holster is supposed to be. Somebody can pull it right out of there. And the holster just, it, it will come off. And somebody can actually pull it. Actually, watch this. Just like that. And the clip, that's what it did. Right there. So, bent open holsters ruined, guns laying on the ground somewhere, and there you are without a gun because you went to the store, you bought your first handgun, and you spent your last $20. Now here's the thing, I'm not saying that all these things are bad or in a bad application, but what I'm saying is there are so many other options out there for pistols like this. The best option is to carry concealed. Go get your CCW, that's what you should do. Let's look at some other options real quick, and I'll show you some of the things. If you're not familiar with them, and again, this is not geared to the people who have holsters, and I'm not trying to be an arrogant ass. What I'm trying to do is help the people out and make an educated decision on a proper holster choice. Here we go. All right, so a real good choice here is like a pancake holster. This is a great option. This right here has a level one retention, very nice. And again, this is a loaded handgun. She's ready to go. But as you can see, it does a great job in retaining and protecting that fire. Here's another great option. This is a Safari Land paddle holster. One is it has a hook in here that prevents it from ever being removed. Also, the inner portion is in your waistband. This is also a level one retention holster, but it holds on to the gun very, very nicely and clicks in. This is about $43. Here's the deal. There's a lot of other retention holsters if you're going to do it. Safari Land makes one of the best ones. Uh, you've got, um, who's the guys over there? There's a, the ones with the uh, little finger deal on it. But the idea is to make sure that if you're going to open carry, that pistol remains with you. It's protected at all times. And ultimately, that's the deal because you need to be protected and the people around you need to be protected.
I'm shooting a video over here. Well, anyway, guys, that's it. Uncle Mike's holster, good for some applications. Let me know what you think those applications may be, but also not so much for open carry in a real world situation. It's Codeboy32. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. Support the red, white, and blue. God bless America. God bless those men, women, in uniform 24 7 for our freedom. Freedom comes a really strong black coffee. It's Codeboy32. Now.